and welcome everyone to the webinar hosted by SAR Education. My name is Diksha and I'll be the session moderator today. Thank you so much for joining us today. So without further ado, let me welcome Ms. Hema Chandra, who will be leading the session today. Before we begin, I'd like to share a few details about Ms. Hema. So, Hema completed her bachelor's of commerce degree from RA Portal College. She, had, she then pursued her management degree from Somia Institute of Management Studies. She has been teaching schools in Mumbai and training primary school students in Jolly Phonics for more than 20 years. Ms. Mehema is a certified trainer for Jolly Phonics and she has trained more than 10,000 teachers, both offline and online. She has achieved a distinction, the CID in teachers and trainer from University of Cambridge, UK. She is TEFL slash TESOL certified from Isle of TEFL, England. Hema also spent two years in the US studying curriculum development and she offers weekend training in Jolly Phonics to underprivileged districts in Mumbai. Ms. Hema established and directed the word Masti Phonics and Grammar Institute in Ghatkopar, Mumbai, which has now expanded into three branches and they trained 400 students annually. I welcome her again to provide more details about the book and share her experience. Also, I would like to mention that we will have a 10 minute question and answer session at the end of the session. So I kindly ask everyone to post all their questions in the Q&A section and Ms. Hema will respond at the end. I will now turn the rein over to you, Ms. Hema. Thank you. Thank you so much, Diksha, for the wonderful introduction and a very good morning to each one of you present here. And uh, I really appreciate that uh, your early mornings, Saturday early mornings has been shelled out. So that shows the need of how much the teachers wants creative writing to be part in the curriculum uh, in the school days uh, with the children, okay? So teachers can change lives with the right mix of talk and challenges in the classroom. So somewhere I feel if the children are not performing, it's the teachers who needs to be blamed and not the children, right? Because we haven't given that kind of exposure to the children. So today we would be discussing how we can include the creative writing curriculum in, in your daily schedules, especially the schools or the after school activity centers, how wonderfully you can you know just merge it uh, with your regular curriculum. So first and foremost, I would extend my appreciation and thanks to the whole of SAR team, especially Abhishek Goel, for giving me this wonderful opportunity. And let's make this session more interactive rather than me talking and you listening, okay? So let's start using our chat box. How are you feeling today? Each one of you, just, just in one word, you can reply it quickly. How do you feel today? Super, fantastic, relaxed, awesome, happy, great. <laughs> awesome, happy, super excited, wonderful. Yes, yes. So now let me share the screen and directly jump into our topic for today. Yes, for a few of them who are not carrying the book, who are not from India, I would request the teachers just follow the screen. Yeah, any uh, questions you have would be dealt in the last 10 minutes. So this is the index which we have planned for grade three and we are soon coming up with grade four and five also in the next two months, yeah. So the chapters are divided, as you can see, it is numbered from one to 18. So we totally have 18 chapters and creative writing, you need to take it up in your school curriculum once a week, because I know you are already tied up with your so many subjects in the school. So it's hard for you to put into your Jolly Phonics, Jolly Grammar, as well as creative writing. So Jolly Phonics, though, we, uh, we guide the schools to include at least twice a week. And the same thing goes for Jolly Grammar, because 
the way we plan our curriculum is one day you do the grammar concepts and the second day, which you have it for the week, you allot it for your uh, comprehension skills. Yeah. So this creative writing, you've got to plan just introducing once a week. So if you take up once a week, annually, you will be having about 36 sessions to be done with the children. So in 36 sessions, we have divided our chapters into 18 chapters. So one chapter, you can spread it for two sessions. Yeah. The first session, you do more of an oral explanation or a very small, small exercise that leads you to the main activity. And the second session has the activity sheets which are already given in the book. So I remember while I take the phonics and grammar workshop, most of the teachers, like many of the teachers, they just used to email me like, hey, mom, and we are thorough with the phonics because you, uh, most of them must be following it in their daily curriculum. Uh, you can see that how Sarah and Sue have done a wonderful job by having the handbooks. So the teachers are happy using uh, the phonics and the grammar curriculum, but they used to get stuck up somewhere with the creative writing. They needed a kind of a support and a help how to go about doing it with the children. Many of the teachers are good. Like while I take, I impart the training, when you give a small, small exercise, the teachers are doing wonderful. But the question was how to do it with the children? What kind of lesson plans? How do you expand your activity over the period of years so that in the end of the year, you get the results that you're expecting? Yeah. So if you follow this curriculum, like strictly, if you follow uh, religiously book three, book four and book five, trust me, by the end of the fifth year, that is after the kids have are moving from grade five to grade six, they would master writing almost about 10 genre. They would be thorough. They would know what the narrative genre is. What is the descriptive genre? The narrative, descriptive, persuasive opinion writing, how to go about doing it, they are going to be sure short, short success if you follow this curriculum, okay? So now I hope everybody is clear that we have got 18 chapters. You need to spread one chapter in two sessions. So I'm going to quickly browse through each chapter very, very quickly and would be dealing with any of your questions in the end. So the first one is dressing up your sentence. Can you make the plain sentence fancy and fantastic. So usually because the child has just come out of grade two, he is more comfortable using a small sentences. He wouldn't even approach you for the spellings or wouldn't even try to use new vocabulary in their day-to-day -day life. So something like they would write very simple sentence like the teachers are teaching, okay? So how can you help the child into expanding their sentence? How can you help him make the sentence fantastic? So ask the child, because they are thorough with all these seven parts of speech, if you are following Jolly Grammar, by to all the children would be thoroughly mastering uh, doing their parts of speech and identifying it in the sentence. That is parsing, right? You start doing at a very early stage, grade one and one, two. So many of the teachers have asked me, ma'am, where is the book of creative writing in grade one and two? So here is my answer. You just form a base using the uh, Jolly Phonics and Jolly Grammar for grade one and two. And then you may start creative writing for grade three, four, and five. Because one and two focuses more on the sentence structures and formation. So maybe a child is ready to write something as simple as the teachers are teaching. Ask them to find the noun. So as soon as they find the noun from the sentence, that is teachers. Okay, teachers is the noun. So ask them to add the adjective. How are the teachers in the classroom? So quickly, can I ask you to use the chat box and give one random adjective? What do you think the teachers are? How the teachers are? The quality of the teachers. Okay, so please use the chat box and share one one word quickly so that I can read aloud and help the other teachers how to expand the sentence uh, doing this exercise, how to expand the sentence. So here we have something like wonderful, hardworking teachers, helpful, uh, versatile, passionate, yes, motivated, compassionate, encouraging, generous, determined, kind, creative, dedicated, caring, mother figure, wonderful, wonderful. So you do the brainstorming of all the adjectives, polite teachers, yes, so you do the brainstorming in the classroom. This we for the whole 
whole book, we are assuming that you have a class of 25 because this is the bunch of the students that we cater to. In one batch, we have 25 teachers with about four teachers in the class, okay? So in, in a batch of 25, if every child is coming up with one one adjective, you already have a list of about 25 adjectives on your board, yeah? Share it with them. Let them read aloud. Just jot it down. Tell them not to repeat any of the adjectives. So the noun, the teacher is already having an adjective. Every child can pick up their choice of adjectives. Okay, so now you already have who or what. So the noun, the child has fine and the adjective he has added words to describe the noun. The second step is, what are they doing? So can we find the action verb? The action verb is teaching. Yeah, you can see the ing. So that's an action verb. And adverb, adverb of quality. How are the teachers teaching? So again, quickly, can I have few words, few adverbs that describes how the teaching is? It could be the teacher is teaching intelligently. She is teaching eagerly. You can have something like skillfully, promptly, efficiently, interactively, dedicatedly, aptly, smartly. Wonderful, wonderful. Yeah. So this is how you again have a list of about 25 adverbs. So the concept is clear to the child that anything that describes the noun, we call them as adjectives. Anything that describes the verbs, we call it as adverb, something that adds to the verb. So here you already have about 25 to 30 list of adjective and adverbs. So now the child has his own choice of making the sentence. So where could this happen? The one in the green code, it's written, where could this happen? Because we want to extend the sentence. So initially you saw that the words were the teachers are teaching. Your sentence consisted of four words. But now, as we are teaching the child the exercise of expanding, we can also include the fifth one, that is, where could this be happening? The teachers are teaching, I agree, but where are they teaching? Okay, so can we complete it? Uh, can we just write the dress up sentence? So let's say I picked up the option, the passionate teachers are skillfully teaching. Who? The children in an NGO where few children are admitted from a nearby orphanage house. I repeat once again, the passionate teachers are skillfully teaching the children in an NGO where few children are admitted from a nearby orphanage house. It's crossing 20. Isn't it amazing? Because after mentioning where the whole thing is taking place, that is in an NGO, I also extended my sentence using while. Okay, using the conjunction while, I also extended my sentence. So now the, the sentence which was like worded in figure of four, it is extended to 20 and 21. So this is an excellent exercise to train the children how to expand their sentence. So maybe in one session, you can discuss it with them. In the other session, uh, you can ask them to jot it down. You can uh, make almost about five to six, these kind of small, small sentences, teaching them how to expand it. And you would see wonderful answers shooting out from the children, okay? And how do you extend it? You know, those little small, small tips. So that's given on page number two. How do you extend it? So here we have for the adverbs, that is all the LY words. Yes. And then uh, you can see adjective of quality. So while you are writing the adjective, don't follow the grammar rules. All the adjective that describes a noun. Adjective is very, very wide. You think it from the angle of, you can talk about the size, you can talk about the condition, the taste, the color, the shape, okay? So this adjective is like very, very wide, yeah? So this is how you teach them that you can pick up any one adjective from this. And later on, vivid verbs. For creative writing, the most important rule is using the vivid verbs. Now, what exactly do you mean by the regular verbs and the vivid verbs? Vivid verbs helps show what is actually helping and it creates a mental picture in the person who is reading the notes or the story and they point to a picture in the reader's mind and show the actions visually, okay? So you have to use those words. So we have given the examples like 
for example, is to run, not just writing something simple like run. You can write scamper, scutter, stagger, tiptoe in the room, wobble, prance, prowl, depends in what context you are describing. So all these words, you can use it uh, while you are expanding the sentence. And as I told you, you can extend your sentence by using few clauses like because, for, while, when, where, since, any of this clause, and you see that the sentence is getting extended. In the previous one, how we used where in an NGO, where few children are admitted. Just because I used where, I have another set of sentences which is combined to my first one, and that is how it has been extended. So you can see, if you want to remember this, it is www.asia. Okay, that is when, while, where, as, since, if, although. So you can help the child by telling, you can pick up one of these uh, clauses and add to your sentence to extend it. And there you can read the two examples which we have given. I fell harshly. So you have your verb, you have your adverbs placed and sprained the tiny finger of my right hand. Agree. And then how do I extend? By adding one of the clauses while playing the football match, which was organized by the school. See, just by adding one clause, just one word, how your sentence framing is changing. Similarly, Mrs. Clinton's white cat loves to sleep. Okay, this could be the simple one. How does she sleep? Cheerfully. Where? Where? I'm adding the clause where. The sunshine strikes the hardwood floors. Yes? So this is how you help the children to use the clauses, to use the vivid verbs, um, the right adjective, mix of right adjective and the right adverb, and you will have a brilliant sentence. So you can change your dull and the mundane uh, sentences to fabulous, interesting sentences for the reader. To continue, uh, the, to just continue with the same exercise, we have here uh, activity one, dressing up your sentence. So here you can see the headings is articles. Yeah, that's the first most. Articles, adjectives, nouns, who are, what is doing the action. Verbs, what actually did they do? Where did they do it? And where, when did it happen, the time? And where did it happen? Yeah, so it is given in the column form so that the children are able to register. So once he fills up this column separately, later on he tries to read it, everything comes as a beautiful sentence. For example, the mischievous leprechaun hid after the rainstorm under a mushroom, or a stingy pixie ran away at the sunset behind the tree. So he'll ask them to write at least five to six sentences in the space which is given. Just pick up the words and write independently in each column and try to read as a complete sentence to change your sentence to drop to tap, okay? And then uh, this kind of exercise, the activity one, as well as the writing opportunity, after discussing with them orally, you can make them write in the next session, yeah? How to use what they have learned, the technique. See, this book is basically focusing on the tools and technique. Here, I directly, I'm not introducing the children to genre but I'm preparing them because directly putting them into genre is going to be very, very difficult. For example, if you just tell them, use the figurative speech, use the onomatopoeia, but the child doesn't know. How do I use? Expand your sentence, use more vivid verbs to make your writing interesting. But the child doesn't know, how do I use it? So in this grade three, we are focusing on small, small, small exercises, which are the tools and techniques which are going to lead them to write more creatively, more freely, more focused into genre based uh, while they are in grade four and grade five. Okay, so these tools are a must to understand. So when the child comes in grade four, you just tell them, expand the sentence the child should understand. What are the steps? What do I do if I have to expand the sentence? Okay, so these are the small, small steps which you focus in grade three, which is going to lead them into genre based writing. So then you have the writing opportunity. And here, as I told you, the exercise is totally focused into just giving one word of clause. For example, mom is taking a shopping, such a small sentence. But if you add the where clause, don't you think it's going to have the double the number of words? For example, now if it is having five, if you extend it using where, it's going to become 10. 
So this is a very simple, simplistic way of teaching the children how to expand the sentences. So similarly, you have, we need to find a gift for dad. Why? Is there any occasion? Is it dad's birthday anywhere? Sir? Is there a function in the office? Is he getting the promotion? So let the child think, let them come up with the ideas. We may eat lunch, when and where. Let each child say it in the classroom. When and where, every child is going to be different. Tell them not to copy what your friend has already said. So a child is going to hear to about, uh, while in the session, he is going to hear 30, 25 to 30 answers for the same questions. And there itself, he's going to improvise on his vocabulary. My favorite after school activity is football. Now you have to give a reason why you are, you are sharing your opinion, you are opining. Why, you know, you just don't, uh, uh, randomly say football or cricket you have to give a logical reason so ask the child i want you to write at least two reasons why do you love football or cricket be more logical so this is how they learn to share their own opinion their own likes their own dislikes their own agreement okay i might go to us during my vacation why Again, why? So every uh, every sentence has been attached with a kind of a clause, which is going to help the child to think about and expand their sentence, okay? So that was chapter number one. Now we move to chapter number two. Circle story, oh my God. You should see how beautifully the children enjoy this and they want more and more. Like if you have planned two sessions, I'm sure they are going to ask, ma'am, can we have one more? You know, this is how much they enjoy. So the next one is, about the circle story. So many times when I explain the concept of circle story, it is something where the story stops. And again, that the same ending becomes the starting of the story. Okay, the, the, the pointers where you start up your story becomes the end of the story. The end of the story becomes the beginning of the story. So my pupils, when I take the class, they really wonder, ma'am, how is it possible? Uh, how, how is uh, this you know, actually done? So here I have given one uh, simple story, which you can read it, yeah? Uh, which again, for example, the last line says, as the mouse runs away, it looks back and thinks, ha, ah, the mouse is thinking, I wish I were a bunny, okay? And you can see the starting of the story, once there was a bunny, he had a big problem. He was not happy with himself and he always thought, hey, what if I was a turtle? Hey, what my life would have been if I was a lion? So this is how you can see the end of the story becomes the beginning of the story. So let's look at one of the stories uh, of uh, how do you do this circle story? Yeah. So this is one of the fable, very famous one. If you give a mouse a cookie, yeah, it is written by Laura Numeroff. We have these books in our classrooms. And there's one more book similar to this, like if you want to do it, or uh, do it in the classroom with the children. See, every chapter, one of the story or the activity has been shared by me, and one you have to do it with the children. So this one we have shared. So maybe the other book, which is again written by Laura, that's if you give a pig a pancake, this can be given it in the classroom uh, session where the teachers can guide the children, okay? So you can see from the picture, I'm just quickly moving through the pictures. You can read the story later on. So how beautifully there is a small boy. Oh, on the right-hand side, there's even uh, the flashcards given, the mini flashcards given, okay? So here uh, you can see, uh, I, I, I just remember, I would love to narrate. There was one child in my classroom. And while we were doing this exercise, we asked the child to, uh, this circle has about one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. There are about uh, 15 elements in this particular story. But initially, you may guide the children to make a story about five elements, okay? Then you may extend it to eight, and then you may take it to 10 or 15, whatever the child has the potential. So for example, I remember one of the child, he had narrated a story. Uh, there, there were birds sitting on the trees, and it, it, started, it, it started pouring heavily. So the child thought, hey, how about making a birdhouse? Yes, so the child is going to the father, 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 can I have a piece of wood? So the first thing he's asking is wood. Now the father get, got him a piece of wood, but the wood was kind of a rectangular. So to cut it, he wanted an X or a saw. So the next thing he's asking is, can I have an X? 
that after that he needed to glue few few of the pieces to make a bird house so he says papa can i have a glue bottle please so he was been given glue and to fix things up he was even given the nails okay and later on he said aha this doesn't look very eye catching how are, how are birds going to come in this particular house so let me paint it uh, using the beautiful and brilliant colors so he's painting it using the colors and in the end he is asking for a hook okay hook to be hung on the tree so that the birds can come now this child had made it so crafty so beautifully that there were four to five birds who wanted to squeeze in but the bird house was very very small it could accompany only two two birds so now the child thought i want to make a bigger one or i want to make more of these so again he goes to papa and asks can i have a piece of wood so this is how uh, exactly the child understood the concept of a circular story so as i'm telling you if using the 15 elements becomes very tricky or challenging you might even go for a five elements and make up a circle story the only target is the goal is uh, to teach the child the beginning of the story happens to be the end so here you can see there was a small boy who happens to give a cookie to this little mouse so after the mouse was given a cookie what is the mouse asking for can i have a glass of milk because i can have cookies all at a by itself after he was given a glass of milk the mouse is asking the boy can i have a piece of straw after he was given a straw and he was drinking a milk there was some milk which was spilled all over the mustache so he wanted a napkin to wipe it and then he wanted to see in the mirror how does it look is it clean and then he wanted the scissors for the grown up uh, whiskers that he had it around after that because uh, the extra whiskers had fallen on the ground the mouse is asking the boy can i have the broom to clean up the hair then do the mopping asking for a bucket after everything was done the mouse is having a nap and then before having a nap it had a habit of someone reading a story book so he is demanding the boy can you read a story book for me while reading the story book there were he wanted to use the paper and the crayons and a pen and then he asked for the scotch tape because he wanted to put some kind of a note on his drawing he was wanted to show it to put it on the refrigerator as soon as he, he went to the refrigerator again he could smell the milk and then he wanted the cookies and then the straw and the whole cycle continues yes see how beautifully uh, laura has uh, you know explained it and this is this is very very apt for a third grader you read the story loudly if you don't have a book you can play it online let them listen to it and the same thing here you can see it has been given in the flash card form so you can ask the child the sequence of the flash card what what exactly happened or ask them to draw it in their notebook like what was the first thing that the mouse asked for what was the second thing that the boy gave it to him so this this is nothing but a sequence sequential writing this is one of the genre you are teaching sequential writing though you are not giving a name but you are preparing the child who is going to go from grade 3 to grade 4 you are preparing the child for a uh, sequential writing genre so the ability to sequence this events in a text is a very very key comprehensive strategy which is especially going to be needed while they write the narrative text because you cannot randomly write the narrative text right you have to have a some kind of sequence as to pehle kya hua the first thing comes first the middle things comes in the middle and the last comes last so the sequence thing even even if the oral the child is answering that it was cookie milk napkin and the other friend is going to say no ma'am he has forgotten the straw so the sequence building is also very very important you may ask them to draw it in their book do coloring and this is how just using the picture they are going to narrate the whole story so here the story is given by uh, the teachers already explained it in the class but the same thing you can go online and check for read aloud uh if you give a pig a pancake that's another circle story or the child can make their own okay there's no limit to it but these are something which are readily available you have lot many activities connected with these stories and you can use it in your classroom while the target and the focus is popular story and then comes the next one that is writing opportunity task 2 as i told you book 3 i have totally focused on 
helping giving the child a writing opportunity you just cannot tell the child write a random text on this is pe aap likho no it has to have some focus it has to have some target so every chapter you have a sheet which is called as writing opportunity let them write let them just write without understanding what genre is he following uh, just focus on writing a uh, more and more expanding the sentence and all so here you can see a describing word helps you imagine how something looks feel feels smells sound or taste very 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 important this is one of the tool which comes in top 5 while you are teaching creative writing to children yes so this is nothing but a descriptive genre this is a tool which a child is going to use it while we teach them descriptive genre because at that time i'm not going to sit i just give them a piece i just give them a situation i just give them a sentence prompts and then they are they should be able to continue on their own but how are they going to continue so this is the tool they are going to use it. the senses use your five senses how something um, smells how it sounds how it feels so i just give you one minute and i uh, if you you are ready with it you can you know just try out google also on google just write down words that describes size just write words that describe size and what, there would be more than 100 words or 150 words so quickly if you want to write in chat one one word you know we are talking about the size yeah so please write so i have given two example colossal lentini enormous small big huge large gigantic tiny towering yes tall huge miniature wonderful wa mammoth wonderful see so you will have a list of about 150 again as i told you get these charts ready and put it on your classroom walls for the display so that the child can freely use the words so maybe initially three to four times he might take the help of this charts but later on that's going to become his regular vocabulary where he is not going to use any charts like these okay so this is my library and i'm just share if i i don't know if you would be able to see it but here i have put around yeah so that's again it's all about uh, these words so keep keep it handy for the children to use it similarly while you are doing the sounds write in the google words that describes the sounds or something that the child comes up, up front you know because few words they are going to be ready with uh, words that describes the weather how are you feeling which is did that exercise so these tools and techniques are going to help them do the descriptive because in descriptive you actually have to show and not tell you have to brilliantly make a usage of your five senses and present it in beautiful way that the reader feels he was actually at the place that you have described in the story okay so this was lesson number 2 now we move to lesson number 3 fortunately unfortunately i don't know how many of the teachers have tried this with the children but again this is kind of a circle story okay it's it's like more of a fun uh, than a serious academic chapter i would say so uh you you can just read it read the notes after the session how to play uh, fortunately unfortunately and we would do a small exercise on this so on the second page again i have given one sample pattern story which you have to discuss it with the children in one session let them get a hang of it or randomly the best part is what you can do it in in our classrooms like we give them about 10 sentences just 10 sentences few of them are positive few of them are negative and they just have to add fortunately and unfortunately so fortunately is something you you add fortunately when something good or pleasant or something that happens in your favor so that's those sentences are going to take fortunately unfortunately is something which is uh, you know unpleasant or uh, you are disappointed about something which is not working to your favor those 
sentences you write unfortunately so this is a very crude raw form of exercise where you just give them about 10 sentences and ask them would it take fortunately or unfortunately or pair partner pairing something you can do it okay so here uh, uh, a small small exercise the three liners okay this is a whole story see it, it's not going to come very easily with the children the whole story but you can give them an exercise wherein they just have to make story of three liners they have to use fortunately twice, unfortunately once. Okay, just a three liners. For example, uh, fortunately there was a parachute in the plane. Okay, unfortunately there was a hole in my parachute. Fortunately, there was a haystack on the ground. So probably the boy fell down from the parachute, but there was a haystack. So you see, there were two things which were in favor of a boy. There was a parachute and there was a haystack for the child so that he didn't get hurt. So these two were favorable. So we put fortunately, and there was a hole in the parachute, which was not good for the child. So there you add unfortunately. So these kind of three liners, you can help the child to make it, guide them. Again, you can do parent share activity. Uh, for example, fortunately, I reached my school early today so that I can have more playtime with my friends. Unfortunately, I just found it that I had forgotten my homework at home. But fortunately, hey, my teacher was absent. Something very, very short and sweet. So give them these kind of exercise, which is creating an opportunity for them to write. And later on, these are going to be actually used when you are teaching them the genre-based writing. So there's a book picture, which I have given fortunately, unfortunately by Michael, okay? And this book, you again, Check the online version. It has not many examples. If you're missing up on ideas, if you want to do a read aloud session with the children, this is a book you got to invest or just read it aloud uh, while you are doing taking up the session. And then I've just given a small exercise, which is again a writing opportunity uh, for child, wherein you, you already taught them how to expand the sentence, but at the same time, you got to train the children of grade three that if similar ideas are coming up, you have to chuck up the common part. Okay, no, you don't always extend it. Like it makes no sense if I say, I want to drink tea, I want to drink coffee. That doesn't sound good. Would I want to drink tea or coffee? So here you have to chuck off something which is very common. So initially you teach them how to expand. At the same time, here we have given an exercise which teaches them that if there's something, there's a common subject or in common, like subject and predicate. If there's a common predicate, you have to chuck off something which is common. For example, I ordered a hamburger. I ordered a milkshake. So you see ordered, ordered is given twice. So you can rather combine it and make it short. I ordered a hamburger and milkshake. Now this becomes your normalized sentence. And then you have to guide the children to expand it. Okay. You can have peach ice cream or a brownie sundae. We have two horses and three hens. Tigers and orangutans are endangered. Are endangered. That is your helping verb and the main verb. You don't repeat it. You just chop off the common and make it one. So tigers and orangutans. This teaches them how to use the conjunctions also, as well as it gets the sentence in the most raw form. And then the expansion happens. Anna wrote the letter and Peter posted the letter, okay? So that was chapter three. And now we move to chapter number four, captivating captions. Again, this you can make it as a big display for your classroom and tell the children how to add the captions to their story. So we have given few examples, like, you know, you, you don't make it very long using the uh, phrases. It, it really has to be short, sweet, and very apt to the image. Again, if you have given the same uh, caption as what the image speaks, you know, it makes no sense. It has to add to your picture. The caption you have to think so that it is giving more information to your picture and just not talking about the picture. For example, happy days are here again. A best version of me I just leveled up, like I just improvised myself. 
life won't get easier you just have to get stronger these are just few examples and uh, over here we have given how to select a caption so in grade four also we have given this particular topic again captivating caption but in grade four book we have given a big formula okay like in the bracket you have verb in the bracket you have noun a uh, catchy adjective so it is given in the form of a formula so now randomly the child can you know give whatever comes to his mind at uh, this particular stage in grade three but in grade four how to make your caption more refined more polished how to give it more finishing touch so that it really looks apt with the picture that has been given so there comes a big formula and that i would be discussing while i announce a session uh, when we discuss our uh, grade four book okay so here it is like very in a very rough and a crude form for example if you see in the next two pages we have given activities where all the three pages in fact second third and fourth page we have given activities wherein uh, the child has to give an option okay so most readers most readers what happens is they look on the photographs first because picture speaks a thousand words so the first thing which is going to grab the reader's attention is going to be the pictures and the second thing is always going to be the caption after reading the caption the reader is going to decide whether he wants to get into the story mode or no is it is it really interesting is it appealing is it going to help him out somewhere so lot the decision of reading up your story totally depends on the caption that you give if the caption is catchy sure it is going to pull the reader so now as i told you you cannot give something uh, very basic for example if there is a picture of a sunrise or a sunset and, and if you just write sunset do you think it's a good caption no the picture is already saying it's a sunset so how can you add more maybe you can add up more little details like specific post sunset directly from the vancouver island something which your picture did not say it you are adding up more and you are letting your readers know by giving that apt caption okay for example while writing the captions also the one important rule is you have to avoid using the articles you usually don't use the articles when you capture it. for example uh, a blue jay flying in the boreal forest so you don't want this or uh, even though there's a single bird you still want to avoid the articles so rather you would put it as blue jay flying through boreal forest something like this yeah so these are a few of the rules and again uh, if you have your class photograph if you have the class photograph and you are introducing your friends in the picture so you don't write from left to right it's understood you just have to mention from the left or the behind row or the front row you just say from left and then you mention the names of your classmates or whoever usually you don't write from left to so don't try to write something in the captions which is very very obvious which is already understood by looking at the picture left say aadmi kidhar jayega right mein jayega na how do you write how do you teach your phonics children moving from left to right so of course when you are looking at the pictures of your classmates your fingers your eyeballs are going to move from left to right so if you say left to right it is too many obvious things so avoid these things just write from left understood so then it's going to move from left to right so these are the few things about not using the articles not mentioning something which is very obvious not using the phrases which makes your caption too long the reader would lose the interest if you write too long captions or if you try to uh, join two three sentences using this conjunctions and the clauses right so it has to be very apt up to the picture and it has to add more which you have missed okay so here uh, we have uh on this sheet yeah so quickly on the uh, you see the first picture and can i have a quick caption in the chat window you just write picture one and a caption you just write picture five and a caption so that we know just randomly pick up the picture which you like and which you, which you think you are ready with the caption and let's read few of them friendship goals wow okay 
I love the friendship goals. It it means so much. You know, they are into their intense talks and intimacy. Fantastic friends, gratitude night, wonderful, awesome teachers, awesome Rima. Yeah, gratitude night that is pictured too. Further, move to three, four, and five. Fantastic friends. Okay. My dreamland. Wow. Yes. Four and five. The day when my parrot spoke. Ah, oh, that's so exciting. Blessings. Pete the parrot. Do you have Pete the cat? And here we have the new one, Pete the parrot. Wonderful. Reaching high, three explorers, wonderful, wonderful teachers for your active treasure book. Friends till the end. See how beautifully it's rhyming. Friends till the end. Childhood diaries, respect for the giver. Awesome, awesome. So this is how, as I'm telling you, if one child is giving one caption, you just jot it down on the board so that the child is excited that you have selected the caption which, which was given by him. And this is how... He, for the same picture, he might have about, you know, four to five captions ready. And this is how you explore, you discuss, and then you have exercise, which you can see, look at the picture, write a suitable caption for the picture. Quickly, can I have it? Uh, there are a lot many animals and they are stuck up in the board. So some interesting caption for this, the picture on the next page, page number 15, quickly, we'll not do the whole exercise, but just a caption for the picture. The next page, teachers, page number 15. There are six, seven questions. What is happening in the picture? Why do you think it has happened? Who is there in the picture? So what do you think we should? Saving the soul, wonderful. Diversity is art. Adventure ride. Roller coaster boat. Off to Funland, wonderful. <laughs> I'm, love, I'm going to save all this and share it with my class children also. Wonderful, awesome. So you, you do this uh, sharing, we are together, save the animal, super, awesome, yes? So this is how you will see the kids are going to chirp in your classroom when you de do these kind of exercise. They are going to absolutely love it. And they, they think out of the box and sometimes they come with awesome answers, okay? So again, in the next page, you have the same kind of exercise activity fall. So you can let them do it or uh, maybe one picture, they have to give a variety of captions, like two, three captions for the one picture that you can do in the writing opportunity. That is the last sheet of uh, this particular chapter, uh, this one. Yes, writing opportunity task four. Yes. And now we move to lesson number five. Again, one of my most favorite, and it is loved by children when you do it with them. So you have this uh, character sketch. So character sketch describes the character of your friend. So the very first sheet is mostly everybody has a best friend in their school life, right? So even the third graders have their besties and they love to talk about their friend. You know, when you tell them, right, myself, they're like, Ma'am, can I write about my friend? Because they have that love for their friend. So this is an opportunity for them to describe about their friend. For example, uh, describe the character of your friend. His or her name is, let's say Nancy. Okay, uh, Nancy. So first we will go through an example, which is given on page number, page number 18. So this is a sample which we have given, which we have provided to the children as an example as to how to go about doing this exercise, how to characterize their bestie or their cartoon character, which he has in his mind. Yeah. So brainstorm with the students, the list of descriptive names, nicknames or aliases for real or the character could be fictional. It might not be real. Okay, the child might have a fictional character as his favorite. But here we have taken uh, character sketch of Harry Potter. So there are many flashcards which you already provided to the child, okay? And then he is going to expand his idea. So you already have has, does, can't, looks like, is. So Harry Potter has a car. He does magic. He can't transform himself. Looks like his father. 
He is, here comes the adjectives, humble, brave, and loyal. He likes playing Quidditch. He dislikes Voldemort, of course, he dislikes him. His pet is Hedwig. He can fly and he loves Hagrid. So this is a classic example of character sketch of Harry. And then you can ask the child to pick up their favorite friend. So let's say <clears throat> Nancy. So Nancy has many novels to read. Nancy does dancing or cooking or helping her mom. Nancy's pet is, you can write the name of a turtle, rabbit or whatever. Just imagine, okay? Nancy likes to watch movies. Nancy dislikes to go out during the afternoon hours. Nancy is a very kind and a polite girl. Nancy looks like her elder sister. Nancy can do multitasking things. Nancy can't do rewriting or redoing the homework. Nancy loves the most her parents and her besties. Yeah, so this is how you help the child to do a character sketch by giving them the small, tiny flashcards where he's going to elaborate, go into the detail and write. Later on, you don't have to provide this word back. You just have to write a note about, uh, you're just helping the child how to describe a character. Okay, Konsabi character, you pick up any character. I think I, I must have given an exercise. Yeah. The uh, next page, you have an exercise where the child is going to pick up any character of his toys. It could be a Cinderella, or it could be Peter Pan, whoever uh, he loves it, you know. Um, yeah, and then he just, uh, Paddington Bear, if if the child is a big fan of Roald Dahl books, probably he might love to write about Willy Wonka or a few kids, few mysterious kids in your child might want to write about Noddy or uh, maybe uh, Matilda, you know, any any characters of your novel is also fine. So maybe you discuss it out. You ask the child to decide on the character in your first session itself so that maybe in a class of 25, you can uh, delegate different characters to each child. Next time, they also come prepared as a teacher. You also be prepared because you got to help the child to answer those small flashcards, okay? So you got to get into the character to write what he has, what he likes, what he dislikes, what he can do, what he can't do. For that, you actually, for example, if it's Poldy, so you actually have to read the story of the Poldy to get his uh, character uh, bloomed out completely, okay? So maybe in one session, you can discuss it out in the classroom who's going to pick up which character. And the next class you describe, like every child will have one, one whole sheet of describing the characters using the flesh card, and then you can put it as your classroom display and then each child can browse through the other characters and know more about it so the session is just for one hour but see the inputs the child is going to learn so many words is going to understand the description of so many characters because gradually in grade three four and five uh, while they are doing or later on Shakespeare you know well, when they, they would be doing in the higher grade they definitely have one question which is about four to five marks about describing the character. How do you describe a character sketch? So these tiny little flashcards can work magic if you have given them has, have, does, the name of the pet, what he likes, dislikes, is, that is the adjectives, can do, can't do, loves them also. These are the small elements which is going to help them to build a character sketch. And then in grade four and five, we actually do the character sketching without having the word bank. So this was about, uh, yeah, so then there's one more sheet behind that's a writing opportunity. And here, imagine that you are interviewing your most favorite famous person. It could be an actor, president, or a rock star. Write five questions that you would like to ask this particular person. And the question words are already given the WH words, the most famous dub, seven WH words. So this is how you start interviewing. This is how the child understands what is the interrogation, what, how do you form a question? You know, probably they, they know the affirmative sentences structures. They even know the negative uh, because in, in first and second grade, you, you have definitely taught them the affirmative and the negative. Now you help them mold into the interrogative asking the question. So you, you can give them the exercise where the answers are provided. Okay, the ball is in the box and they have to 
put the question, where is the ball? So these kind of exercise also helps them to think and then master how to use this WH word, okay? So this is again a writing task where you have a focus of using this particular words. At the same time, you are it, this could be parent share. One of the child assumes that the other person is his rock star. So A child is interviewing and the B child is going to revert it back. So whatever questions they are answering, questioning each other, you can put it in the sheet. The next one is maybe the month of December, you want to cover up Santa's coming. So here you can see uh, a basic letter format has been given by us. It has been provided to the children. They read it loudly. The teacher explains them. You can see how it is divided into three paragraphs. The one, paragraph one, that is the beginning of the letter. Then you have the middle of the letter. And then you have the ending of the letter. In the middle, again, you see it is bifurcated into like this child is asking something to Santa because he was good throughout the year because he behaved very well. He was a helpful elf to the mama. So here you can see he's asking for a few things. The first thing I would like is Galaxy 300. Then you have the next thing I would like is the red and the blue two-wheeler scooter. The third thing you would like is a toy. So this is how you are expanding the body of the text. See, the beginning is going to be small. The ending is going to be small. The thing which you can extend is going to be the body of the text. So here, because he's demanding three to four things from Santa, you put everything in the body, the first thing, the second thing, the third thing. And then he's trying, in the next paragraph, you can see, uh, I am outside, when I am outside in the dark, after that, I have been trying my hardest. So now he is even, he is not missing out to pinpoint Santa, how good he was. I stopped sucking my thumb. He is, he is telling everything, the behavioral part, what he was good at, what he did. He was, I'm also my teacher's special helper for listening station at school. So then he is convincing him that I, I was really good this year and why he deserves this gift, you know. And in, in the last, again, he's hoping that everything is good at Santa's place. So this is a basic format which you have to teach to your child that uh, the beginning where you tell Santa the purpose of you writing this letter. The second is the text where you are expanding because you have few demands one after the other, the first thing, the second thing, the third thing, and the last thing, Santa, I wanted from you. This is how you're expanding. And then you are giving him the logic why you deserve these four gifts. So you give your behavioral pattern, you, how good you were. And in the end, you are again asking Santa that everything seems to be good at your place. So this is how uh, you help them write a letter. And there's always going to be a few struggling writers in your classroom who wouldn't be or able to easily write so much without without your help or guidance so for them you you can have something like this in in the blank form you know dear dear what whom are you writing this letter dear santa how are you i hope you are well i have been good all year through three good things i have done so done 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 three to four good things this year i would like these things for christmas so here you can see you have given all and so you are kind of a revising your uh, and, and concept also in this about articles. I promise I'll be good. Thank you. So there are about three to four small uh, errors which, which are there in the book. So as in when I'm passing through that chapter, I'm going to guide you. So here, if you can just edit Merry Christmas, that Christmas, if you can just capitalize, since it's a name of the festival, it always should be capitalized. Mary M and Christmas C. So if you can just do these changes, there are totally four, just remind me before the end of the book that we have covered all the four. So this is the very first edit, if you can change it to capital C, thank you. The second edit is on the very next page, that is page number 23. So here again, uh, if the child is, you know, uh, thinking a lot about how to write a letter to Santa, what all elements do I uh, expand on, what ideas do I write? So you might want to give them these kind of flashcards. The, this, these are nothing but the word bank. Okay, the word bank are given in a colorful form. So if you have a struggling writer in your classroom, I would suggest you ask them to write one one sentence on each flashcard, like thank you, presents, reindeer, candles, mistletoe, chimney, one one sentence on each, you help them with that. And if you think the child can make its own story, or the child is 
uh, capable of writing or drafting a letter. So you may tell a child to write a letter totally on his own independently by including these uh, uh, flashcards, okay? So we have this exercise over here on the next page. Uh, write your own letter to Santa describing what you want and why. After doing that, fill in the blank version. Now, even your struggling writer would be able to write independently as to what he wants and why. Second one is the B activities, draw the presents. They definitely love to draw. They're very clear, basically, the children, what they want from Santa. You just, you just take up 15 minutes, ask them what they want. Every child has about a list of five to seven objects. You know, none of the child would say, I have everything. In spite of they have everything, they would have a list of something which is missing in their day-to-day -day life and that they are going to uh, write it or present it. So draw the presents that you want from Santa. They love drawing. Yes, expressing themselves. All the Santa's reindeer have Dutch origin. Find the names of all the Santa's reindeer and capitalize them. So here you might want to share a link of one of the Santa's book, which they're going to read aloud at home. You may share the link with the parent, ask them to go and read. Find the names of all the reindeers. Again, here you have to teach the children that because reindeers belong to the deer family, you remember the irregular plurals that we have? Sheep, fish, deer, they don't have any plurals. They remain the same. Even if there are 100, you still stay sheep and deer, right? So similarly, you, you never have, even though Santa has got nine reindeer, you don't say reindeers. It's reindeer, okay? So the names are Dasher, Dancer, Prancer, uh, Cupid, you have uh, Comet, Vixen, Blitzen, and the most favorite is Rudolph. Now, why was Rudolph most favorite for Santa? So again, you can provide two, three links of the books where the child is going to read and come back to you why Rudolph was one of the favorite. You know, you are asking them to, uh, you are providing a text to them and they read it and logically they got to give you answer why Rudolph was one of his favorite out of all this uh, nine reindeer, okay? So that, um, uh -huh. so the second edit is at page number 23. The first flashcard which says Santa Claus, the clause doesn't, Santa doesn't come with a E, Santa Claus. There's just Santa Claus, C-L-A-U-S, okay? This Santa Claus means a movie. So if, you still want to keep the same, that's okay, you know, but this Santa Claus, what I've written, it is one of the movie, early movies, which has come in 1946, okay? So that movie's name was given with an E to differentiate with the real Santa. But if you want to give uh, the flashcard or the word bank as the Santa, Christmas Santa, then you will have to edit that E, okay? So that was the second edit, and there are two more in the book. So now we move to lesson number seven, which is Pourquoi story. What is Pourquoi? Pourquoi means why in French. Why, you know, there are questions in our mind. Why certain thing happens? Why? Why is this? Why is this? A Pourquoi story, also known as etiological tale, is a fictional narrative. Okay. So, for example, when, when the questions come, says, why do chameleon change colors? Why is the ocean used? Certain questions, don't you come in, in your mind? Of course, the children have more questions. Why do tigers have stripes? Okay, so these are, when, when your uh, name of the book starts with why, it means it's one of the Pourquoi stories. Okay, the entire story is fictitious in nature. Yes, the entire story which you are writing in Pourquoi is fictitious in nature until the last statement. Yeah. So we'll see the example, uh, here I have, I have given a few examples. These books, you might want to read it aloud with the children, like uh, how the chipmunk got its stripes and uh, how Raven got its crooked nose or how the rooster got the crown. Why does the sun go down at night? Why does the ocean tide go in and out? Why do raccoons look like they are wearing a mask. So whenever your name of the book is why or how, most probably 
90% of the time, it is talking about this African tale. Okay, this, this is the African tales, old African tales. So, uh, and the most important element of this polkwa is in this particular story, you assume, you are just assuming that animals or the, uh, for example, why are clouds blue? So the clouds, they tend to talk. You give them the human qualities. You pass on the human qualities to them. So here you have your one of the most important figures of speech. Okay. So animals or the natural element have human-like qualities, such as they can talk, they can run. In real, they cannot, right? They, they don't talk. The clouds, of course, don't talk. But in Polkwa story, it is as if you give the elements like you can, they can walk, they can talk, they can sleep, they can do everything. Animals though, they can sleep, but they can even talk like humans. Okay, this is one of the important uh, aspects of uh, Pulpua story. And again, this is lots of fun. So for example, uh, you have the story why mosquitoes buzz in people's ear. Again, if you don't have the physical copy, absolutely fine. You have the online version of it. You can read it aloud to your class. And you read it twice, element by element. It is the best example of Polkwa. Like there are a lot many stories, but this is one of them, which is my favorite because kind of it resembles the circle story. It, it actually uh, gives the causes and the effect. For example, there's something, some cause, and then there's some effect. The effect is becoming the cause and there's different effects. So I'll explain what I'm talking about. So here we have, for example, why and how? The first question, why and how? So what is the story all about? You just have to write the name of the story. Why the mosquitoes buzz in people's ear? The second one is setting. So you can extend your lesson plan. Since I told you Polkwa is more about the African tales, you might even want to ask the child, uh, uh, relocate the African countries in the map and just extend your lesson plan. Or you might even want to discuss out the climate uh, that Africa has, the rainfall, uh, maybe the vegetation and the inhabitants, you know, just as a part of your lesson. So setting where exactly did the story took place? So this story took place in West African uh, tales and it happened in the jungle. Who were the main characters? If you just read the story, if you already know the story, you know all the animals uh, followed in, in a kind of a sequential pattern. So it was iguana, mosquito, mother owl, king lion, crow, rabbit, python, monkey. So these are not given in the order. But if you are reading a story, ask the child while you are reading it, ask them as soon as a new character has been introduced, ask them to write it in their book so that you are maintaining the sequence of the main characters which comes in the story. What was the main problem that happened in the story? Who has killed the baby owl? That was the question. That is where the king got stuck up. Who exactly has killed the baby owl? And what was the solution? King Lion finally discovers the truth and the mosquito was punished on killing the baby owl. Okay, on killing the mother owl. So this is how the story is uh, and you can read it. So here we have again the fourth sheet as writing opportunity. So this is what I was trying to explain you. For every cause, there is an effect in this particular story. Because there was a lie which was committed by mosquitoes and that is how the story took place. That is how it extended just because of that one lie. So mosquito, just hold on for a second, excuse me. Yeah. So first, mosquitoes lied about the farmer's yam. That is how it started. And what was the effect? Because of that, Iguana puts sticks in his ears because he didn't want it to hear any kind of nonsense from the mosquito. So in the effect column, you have to write Iguana puts stick in the ears. Now, just because Iguana has put in the ears, the sticks in the ears, that is the cause, the effect was Python slithers down the rabbit's hole because what happened was Iguana had the sticks in the ears. Python said, good morning. Iguana did not hear. And what Python interpreted is, 
maybe iguana is planning something to play a mischief on me so python got scared and it slithered down the rabbit hole yeah that was the effect now when the python slithered down the rabbit's hole that was the cause what happened next crow uska kaam kya tha the task which he was delegated was to sound the alarm in the whole jungle so the crow started sounding the alarm like there's some danger in the jungle please be alert please be alert that was the next effect and because the crow started sounding the alarm what happened monkey started flying from one branch to another because even he got uh, panic like what has happened something really serious maybe a fire or some new animal have prowled in, inside the jungle so when the monkey flies from one tree to another what happened was mother owl doesn't wake the son with the hoot and this finally kills one of the owlet because mother owl had gone to find the food for the babies and the baby owlet was uh, killed in the nest now who killed this mother owlet so till now till today mosquitoes keep on uh, mosquito wanted to hide from this punishment but the king lion called for a meeting it's very very interesting story it's one of the african old uh, famous polka story you got to read it you read it aloud get uh, the sequence the exact sequence as to how the things happened what was the cause what was the impact the impact becomes the cause again and what was the effect the effect becomes the cause and what was the effect so this is not exactly the circle story but this polka story explains uh the children that every cause has to have an effect so i have put one more exercise which wherein we have picked up the actual causes in in our stories for example pinocchio had a long nose remember so why what was the effect of that so we will be coming to that sheet also so this finishes lesson 7 and now we move to lesson 8 lesson 8 is which is blue yeah because children knows to write positive characterization positive uh, adjectives but at the same time when the child is in grade 3 you must also teach them the negative words because every story has going to in in further higher grades there, there is going to be a villain in the story so you got to prepare the child for the negative adjective words also so these are the small versions because for which you might not say beautiful which right it's definitely going to be ugly so these are few of the small chapters which is going to highlight on the negative uh, adjectives of the characters yeah so this is also very very important which is blue which is cold horn which is portion so write 20 adjectives for the witch so all these words are going to be uh, negative because you are not, the the witch of course is not going to be polite the which of course is not going to be kind uh, exception you know few of my children say no my which was very kind okay so they can write the positive attributes also but at the same time you have to keep handy in your classroom 20 negative adjective words also so that in higher grades when they have to imposter when they have to posterize the uh, negative character the villainous character of the story they have these words handy so here you write about 20 adjectives a person who studies which and knows a lot about them you call it as which of you so now page number 30 hold yeah page number 30 again here there is a spelling mistake for the word cold drone it has to be c a u l instead of c a l caldron it's printed as caldron in the first two uh, lines so you change it to caldron c a u l okay in the previous sheet it's uh, right but over here uh, there's a typo error i'm absolutely sorry for the same yeah so here this is a song of the witches you teach the children because it has those uh, uh, rhyming kind of a thing it's fun to read it aloud double double toil and trouble fire born and caldron bubble See, this is how this rhyming scheme comes: snake and bake, frog and dog, sting and wing, trouble, bubble, trouble, bubble, blood and good. So this rhyming scheme is fun. Let the children read it loudly. Uh, go and explain each word as to what does a fillet of fenny snake? What exactly does it mean? Okay, because 
you need to understand this uh, one of the very famous uh, William Shakespeare from Macbeth. This 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 taken from. You got to understand uh, this. The reason is the next question which I have given. The next sheet, if you see, let's make some witches brew. Okay. So the question comes to the child mind: What is there in the brew? They, they they have never heard about it. Either they have never made about it, or even if you know the child wants to help mom in the kitchen, you might ask mom, "Can I help you in making the soup? Can I help you making a maggi?" Would you imagine a child asking mama, "Chalo, let's make witches brew"? No, right? So the child doesn't know what are going to be the contents for the witches brew. So if you help them read and understand this piece of Shakespeare. It's going to be very easy for them. Excuse me. Um, yeah. 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 It's going to be very easy for the child to answer the questions. What are the contents in the witch's book? What are the ingredients that you put while making them? Okay. So, for example, here you have eye of a newt. Yeah. Then you have toe of a frog. Wool of a bat, tongue of a dog, adder's fork, blind one, lizard's leg, howlet's wing. All these are something which you put as uh, the main ingredient while you are making. Now, again, here it looks like, how does it look like? So of course, it does not uh, look good, right? So, more negative characters, more negative, you have to describe the whole thing very negatively with negative words, negative adjectives. As I'm telling you, it is very important for the child to learn it because they might come across a negative character also. So how does it smell? How does it sound? How does it feel? How does it taste? You know, so you though can put good adjectives also, but more has to be the negative adjective. Yeah. So again, I would suggest you to make a list of good adjectives as well as the negative adjectives in your classroom. Keep it handy so that whenever you are uh, trying to describe this wizard or which kind of a characters, you always have the list ready. And the next one you can see, the next sheet is about my witches brew. So what all things are you going to add? So here, let them be as creative as they want to be. Okay, in Google, if you try to search, the contents of witches brew, they have about 100 to 150 different options, okay? So you might want to talk about a few of them in front of your children and then let them decide what combination and you should see their weird faces. And, uh, you know, when you said uh, frog's leg or dog's tongue, they are like, oh man, how does it taste? So let them think, go ahead and think how, how it's going to be taste and all. So, and then you have one more. Uh, it is a spell. You, you're casting a spell, right? After adding everything and you, you cast a spell so that the, the mixture or the final product comes out to be very smooth and nice. So what are a few of the spells? So let the child make their own spells, okay? I have just picked up a few of them which I heard it in the Harry Potter movie like uh, Expelliarmus or Skeptum Centra or Wingardium Leverosa. Uh, all these kind of things are taken from uh, the movie of Harry Potter, but the child can create their own. And again, you would hear brilliant answers from them, though it doesn't make any sense. These words, casting a spell, the spells doesn't make any sense either. It might have rhyme, nothing, but let them create their own, you know, what, what you want to make. Let every child be different. Let every child be different in the ingredients. Let every child be different in casting a spell. And again, this worksheets, you can, you know, take a print or get it ready and put it in your classroom display and let each child go through the work of the other children because it's going to be a totally different combination as the ingredients are different as well as the spells are different. Yeah. The next one we move is lesson nine. Yeah, lesson nine. So what is postcard? So here you can see this is the old time postcard. We just wanted to highlight uh, how how the parents, uh, you know, while we were growing up, how the postcard looks. So that's the reason I've given the traditional one. But you can 
ask the children. Now here you can see there are 10 ideas. You can read up after the session as to what all things do you include in writing a postcard if you've gone out of town. So, you know, what all things would you like to include in it? Uh, describe your holiday, what are your plans, taking a boat ride. So you write it to your friend. On the next page, you can see, you can draw a postcard and describe how was your day. The next one you have is writing opportunity task nine. So this is a kind of a picture composition. So always, how do you do the picture composition? You have to look at the surrounding. Think about the setting where the picture has taken place. Observe the main verbs, the actions, what all things are happening. Uh, take care of your capital, the punctuations, the full stop while you are writing the picture composition. So here you can see the grandma, there are two kids who are playing on the branches. The child is, uh, sweetie is attentively listening to grandma's story. Cian is just peeping behind grandma as to what she's reading. Helena is busy playing with her scooty. Sam is running his dog. So this is how you write sentences separately and then join it together and make a paragraph on the same. So this is again a writing opportunity, target, targeted writing. Next, we have lesson number 10, a birthday invite. So you might want to read up how to make an invite. What all things should you include? So use the colorful language, announce the theme, mention the date, time, and address, and list the contact information and the date of RSVP. Okay, so here you can see a sample birthday exactly on these bases. The child has to do it on the next page. You know, their own. maybe they can describe their own birthday. They can plan a theme. The menus are also going to be theme based. You know, they might want to put a few junk item or something kind of a Hollywood dressing or Metro in a retro theme. See, they have any number of ideas because they celebrate their fifth birthday, they celebrate their 10th birthday, birthday. So just leave it to them, you know, let them be as creative as they want to. And then here you can see what all things the child has jotted here, the same thing, you can help the child merge it and try to make it as a beginning, the middle and the ending and the whole birthday party planning sheet. Okay, again, a focused writing activity. Then the next one we have, lesson number 11 is plan a story, build and write it. This is something which you have been, uh, you must have noticed with grade one and two also in a very simpler form. So here the outline or the main, uh, main happenings of the stories have been given, okay? Not in a complete sentence and the child has to write in a completed form. So one example has been given. And then we have put two examples which discuss it out with them add few adjectives, give few connections, and then develop their own story, and also giving a moral to the story. As you can see, united stand and divided we fall. Similarly, there's one more piece that we have given so that it becomes easy for the teacher as to how to go about expanding the story ideas when you are just being given the pointers. So that is lesson number 11, something which is very pretty simpler. And then you have lesson number 12, and here there's a, a big error as to, there are five boxes you can see. In the fourth box, the drinks, just chop it off because it, it's printed exactly what is there in the main course. So maybe for the drinks, you can add up Pepsi, Fanta, uh, Sprite, Masala tea, or Mango Lassi or anything. Yeah, just, just cut it off and add four to five drinks of your choice, okay? So then you have this complete, and I'm absolutely sorry for this uh, errors in the book. So then you have kind of a few instructions, the name of the hotel, it is served between 6 p.m. to 11 p.m. So all these you need to read and interpret and discuss with the children before you move out with the comprehension questions. So the next sheet is all about comprehension, which the child would be able to answer confidently, okay? after you have explained them the uh, hotel menu. In fact, a hotel menu, we start at a very early age. At my center, we actually provide the real hotel menus to all the children and they have to do the reading. And they read it, the whole menu card. We take them from simple menu to complicated menu. So before they move to first grade, they confidently are reading the menu card, which I have actually made it. I mean, it's, it's not a worksheet. It actually looks like a menu card to you. 
which I actually went to the real hotels nearby and have made it. Okay, so children read it confidently. So this is one of the exercise you can even include for your phonics or the grammar children. So then the food prompts, you can see activity 12. Imagine what uh, God would eat for the breakfast and dinner. And just, just let their imagination go wild. There's nothing right and wrong. So let them be on their own and write these answers. The next one you can see is I have connected it with food prompts. Yeah, few idioms that they can use it. It's a piece of cake. What does it mean? It's very easy. And then they have to use it in the sentence. I'm sure the test next week will be a piece of cake for me. I have been studying for a week. I've been studying for a week, okay? So these are a few idioms that you can guide the children to use it, understand the meaning and make uh, uh, use it in their uh, sentences, yeah? So that was writing opportunity task 12, a focused activity for your session. Then we move to lesson number 13, and it is absolutely one of the most, most, most important element of creative writing. It is show and not tell, showing and not telling. What does it mean? It means that you can see something that is there in the maroon color. Michael was terribly upset of the dark. This is, I'm trying to tell you a sentence, but in creative writing, in your descriptive writing, you don't have to tell. The first rule is you have to show. You have to make the reader feel that they were in that particular setting and they have to invite the character. So on the left-hand side, you can see and read. Instead of Michael was terribly afraid, you try to put a situation which presents that he was really, really upset. So here I have given almost about the next sheet. If you move page number 50 and 51, you will see there are 10 awesome examples, awesome um, feelings have been taken, the happy, the emotions have been picked up, happy, shocked, angry, sad, uh, tall, cold, nervous, yeah, talented. And then you don't have to tell. So you have to avoid the sentences which are written in pink while you're doing your descriptive genres. And instead you have to write it, which is given in the green. So these are few sentences which you have given. You will have to work on this exercise with the children. At least you have to do about eight to 10, okay? To make them confident, to understand what is show and not tell. What exactly this rule means? Because while you are doing descriptive, uh, worksheets, you, you are not going to sit and explain them what is show and not tell. You just, you just have done the exercise. So you just guide them that this is the rule which we are going to follow while doing the descriptive writing. So show and not tell is one of my favorite as well as initially it is a little tricky for the children because they, they run short of words, but if given proper guidance, they, they do it beautifully. Okay. And your uh, task number 13, if you can see writing opportunity, again, we have given like five sentences. Jessica Dress is unusually, the movie was boring. All these are the pink colored sentence, which we got to avoid it because it just tells. Yeah. So we have to describe it so that we are showing it. For example, the roller coaster ride was scary. Rather than telling that it was scary, I, I might want to put as my whole body was shaking. My face was as white as my bleach spot. Looking down, I saw that my knees were knocking together. I could barely stand up. I felt like I'll soon faint in my ride itself. So when you write all this, it is obviously trying to show that you were scared, but don't directly write that you were scared. So this is one of the very, very important rules for your descriptive genre. And now we move to lesson number 14, story pyramid. Again, one of my favorite topics that I love to do it with the kiddos. And here you can see how beautiful, beautiful it looks. Let me directly take to how does it look. The narrative pyramid. So this is your genre. Because see something very clear for third and for, for the fourth grade or something uh, expository. What does it mean? Anything that explains or informs becomes your expository. What is descriptive? Anything you describe becomes your descriptive genre. What is narrative? Anything that you narrate, usually you narrate a story, so that becomes your narrative. What is persuasive? Any note which persuades the buyer 
the, the opposite party to buy things is first USC. Okay, make it as simple. And then you have a lot many other which we would be covering for grade five, four and five also. Yeah, so how does this narrative pyramid work? You can see one example which I have given already is about Goldilocks, okay? So that has to be only one, the character, the main character of the story are one word, so Goldilocks. Then you move to two characters. What are the two words? You are describing, adjective, how Goldilocks was. So she was obnoxious as well as rude. What was the setting? Where did the story take place? House in the woods. What was the actual problem in the story? Four words. Goldilocks breaks in the house. What are the events that happened later on? Goldilocks eats the bear's porridge. What was the climax of the story? The three bears came back home. What was the falling action? Baby bear finds Goldilocks in his bed. And the last one expressed the solution in eight words. Goldilocks wakes up and runs into the wood. Isn't it interesting? The children, when you do pair and share, the children are going to love it. So this is one example which we have presented about Goldilocks. Similarly, you can take about Cinderella. As I'm telling you, the kids has their own favorite characters from the stories. So you can take up any character and present it. And this is a piece of narrative. Yeah, in a simplest form, in a very rude form, raw form, okay? So this is a narrative pyramid, as you can see, and that can be given it as homework. One session, you discuss it out, you explain how it needs to be done, how to pick up the words so that it explains everything to the reader, and then you go ahead. Now we move to lesson number 15, which is all about story pies. So every story, yeah, so here the story pie, pie has been uh, segregated into one, two, three, four, five, six segments. If your story is small, it could be three segments, three pies also. If your story is big, you think your class children are going to do it and you want it more, you can have eight to 12 pie also, but that might extend up your session. It could be three or four sessions for this. Otherwise, five or six is a normal one. It can range somewhere from four to six for grade three, okay? So for example, uh, for your class, we'll take up this story chart and with 25 children, pick up different stories. Pick up 25 different stories for each child. Let them read and come for the next session. Ask them to jot down the important events. So for example, I have given Hansel and Gretel, but don't let the whole class do Hansel and Gretel. Then the learning doesn't happen. It's The session is not as productive as you want it to be. So give different characters, different stories, and then put it in your classroom. Let the children go and read through the same. Okay, then uh, the last, uh, the exercise, the fourth page on lesson number 15 is very interesting, something the children just enjoy doing it. Okay, for example, change the thing into the time of the day or change a cheater into a job that is teacher, just play with the words kind of an anagram. Then you have lesson number 16, stories using the transitional words. Again, absolutely important uh, rule for creative writing yeah your narrative stories you have to write so here you have to add first next then and final let's say if you have more sequence okay here the paragraph is divided just into four things first what happened next what happened then and finally what do you do if you have more elements to your story more sequential things then the only thing you do is you keep on repeating next next three to four times or you can even repeat then, then two to three times. But the first comes first and the finally comes in the last. You can switch between next and then. It doesn't make much of a difference. And you can add next, next three times also if you have more elements to be added in the paragraph. So that is stories using the transitional verbs. And here you can see with the help of a transition words, write, write and arrange the steps how to make tea. So the sentences are already given, but you might pick up something where the sentences are not given. For example, how to make a sandwich. Okay, the instructions are not there. Let the children write the instructions as to very first thing, what are they going to do? So take up the bread, apply some butter, place or segregate the um, cucumber, or tomato, slice of tomatoes, capsicum, whatever, add a tinge of slice, uh, cheese, and sauce and everything. So 
they need to write in the order first, next, then, after, finally. And again, I'm telling you, this is given for T, but you can be as creative and give different to all the children. Next is the activity, which is self-explanatory. What, for example, every, every, every incidence has got beginning, middle, and end. So assume the first one on a busy street in Tokyo, the traveler was lost. This is the beginning. What could be the middle? What could be the end? Let the child decide and expand on this idea. Similarly, my mom is baking cookies this afternoon. This is the beginning. What do you think is going to happen next? What is going to be the next, the ending of this? Yeah, small, small exercise. Again, think of two sentences, combine both of them using these clauses. Then we have the 17th one, cause and effect, which I was talking about it. It's very important for them to understand the cause and effect. For example, Pinocchio told a lie. And so that's the reason his nose grew 10 feet long. So read the causes, explain the children the effect, okay? And then they can make their own. For example, the sentences are given. Tom forgot his math book. And that is the reason he was unable to complete his book. So they can create their own sentences where you can segregate the sentence into cause and effect. Because again, these exercise, uh, this trick is going to be used while we are doing genre writing. Okay. So then you have writing opportunity, kind of almost uh, overlapping exercise about uh, Je uh, Jamie raised her hand because she had a question. What, what is the effect? What is the cause? Would you be able to identify? So effect is nothing but what is happening. Cause is nothing but why it happened. So the child needs to understand this and then he is going to be able to segregate the sentence into which part is the cause and which part is the effect, okay? And now we come to the last chapter, which is the newspaper recount. As you can see, newspaper recount is nothing but your expository writing, all your text, the encyclopedias, the dictionaries, the newspapers, all these comes under. So I haven't uh, explicitly given the name, but this is nothing but a raw form of expository writing. And we will be doing much, much in detail as to what needs to be considered. We have not touched upon opinion writing. We have not touched upon argumentative writing. We have not touched upon persuasive writing because this three goes hand in hand. So it is covered in book four and five, because when you are giving opinion, let's say uh, going to Bali or going to Mauritius. So you share your opinion, like I want to go to Mauritius. That is nothing but a opinion journal. Okay. After that, you are trying to convince your friend, ke nahi, Mauritius, ke jaisa kuch bhi nahi hai, Bali bhi nahi. Mauritius is Mauritius and that's one of the best. When you Persuade your friend to come for the trip along with you. That is nothing but persuasive writing. And when you are very adamant, when you have 10 reasons that no, Mauritius is better and best than Bali, you come to a dispute, you come to a debate, which is nothing but the argument. So this three goes hand in hand. They are kind of sisters and brothers that goes together. Opinion, persuasive and argument. Where opinion comes here, the bigger phase is your persuasive and then comes argument. So these are the rough tools and uh, techniques in grade three. We are helping them to make a base, uh, just giving them opportunity to write and, and which is going to help them later when we target, when we teach them how to do the genre writing. Okay, so here you can see you have this labels, name of the newspaper, headlines, opening article, uh, this again is going to be very easy for you to understand because the example is given and as a homework or as in your next session, you can uh, ask the children to get a cutting from home of some headline along with the article and then try to label it out. Okay, and talk about it in detail. What, what is the purpose of the headline? What is the purpose of the subheading? What is the purpose of the picture? the main events and everything. Just talk about newspaper headings and all captions and all, yeah? So this ends all the 18 chapters that finishes our grade three. Really be excited to launch book four and book five soon. 
I hope you all have filled up the Google form so that we have your email ID to get back to you when we come up with book oil find. And uh, it was uh, really exciting for me to write the book because even while writing the lesson plan got me as if I was sitting in the classroom with the children, I could, uh, you know, uh, like I have done most of this, I have done it with my children. So it is already tried and tested. It is getting the results. They, are con they become confident writers as well as readers. They understand genre very closely. So I just wish if you are going to start this once a week with the children, it's absolutely going to take them to the different level, the school and the teachers. If the school is going to invest in this, I can take up one more session to train your school teachers as to how to go about doing it. If you are doing it as after school activity, I'm always available through via emails. If you get stuck up in any of the chapters, if you need more help, more examples, just message me. I'm just a phone call or a WhatsApp away. Yeah, so thank you so much for your patience. So I request all of you to please post your questions and question in the chat box. Okay. Okay. So Ms. Ma, Ms. Hema can answer all the questions. Uh, one of the question is, uh, I just saw it. How to explain the difference between adjective and adverb? That's pretty simple. There cannot be a confusion. So give connection, find the noun in the sentence and ask the question how. The first step is to find the noun, ask the question how. The answer you get is going to be your adjective. For example, here is a beautiful teacher, a tall teacher. Which is the noun? Teacher. How is the teacher? Tall. Tall becomes your adjective. And the second thing you ask is Edward. So focus on the verbs. The action that a child does from morning to till he goes off to sleep, all the actions, waking up, having bath, going to school, doing homework, playing, drinking milk, pondering, sleeping, everything. So all these are the verbs, how the action is being done, the manner, how he is doing becomes your adverb. And adverbs also describes the adjective. Adverbs not only describes the verbs, Adverbs also describes another adverb as well as adverb also describes the adjectives. So you need to give a set of examples. The first set of examples wherein adverb is describing the words, verbs. The second set of sentences, you need to give examples wherein your adverb is describing another adjective. Third set you have to give that the adverb is describing another adverb. To understand more of this, you can join any of our grammar workshops, which tackles grade one to four or maybe five and six, where we deal more with parts of speech and the placement of each in a sentence. Is there any, one second, is there any word limit? We should teach adjectives and adverbs before starting creative writing? Yes, before starting creative writing, they should be aware of adjectives. And that is covered in most of the schools as well as after school activity center in grade one and two. Jolly grammar is a prerequisite for this book. What if the school or an individual has not done jolly grammar? Theek hai, jolly grammar nahi kya, simple traditional grammar to kiya hai na? Because even jolly grammar and the traditional grammar are quite overlapping. The nouns is still going to remain the noun. The adjective is still going to be the adjective, even though if you're not doing jolly, still the parts of speech remains the same. The only thing we expect is the child should be able to do parsing well. He should be able to identify each part of speech by the end of the year. And those exercises are beautifully tuned in in the handbook. If you have a look at grade three, four, and five, every lesson has got one sentence of parsing. And trust me, my children, they want more because Jolly has given one one sentence for parsing. They are not happy with one because everybody, every child needs a chance. They want to answer. So every session, I keep 10 sentences ready, which they, they do parsing. Each child has been provided one sentence. And they are so excited about doing it because they've just learned each of them in detail and now identifying it and challenging themselves and their friends is very, very exciting. 
So if you're following Jolly Grammar well and good, if you're not still the parts of speech or even phonics, if you're not doing Jolly phonics, other phonics, the sounds remains the same, right? And I would request to switch on to Jolly because it's one of the most used in the global program, which is giving you results. So it's better to shift, but still you can use this book. It's not a prerequisite, but if the child has followed, things are going to be much easier for them to pick it up. Many congratulations. This book was much needed. Thank you. Uh, grade one and two. I would say work on the sentence structures, the spellings, the phonics base, the fluency in reading, the spoken English. So grade one and two, you work on that. And from grade three, then you move to the creative writing part. So it becomes very easy. For example, this just, just take the very first chapter, expanding the sentence. Do you think your first grader would be able to do it? Of course not. They don't know what are adjectives. They don't know what are adverbs. It's, it's very difficult. It's very challenging. You will have to help. 70% of the work would be done by teachers. Rather, do it at the age when they are capable of doing it, when they are able to understand the things. So third is the right age to present this book and do it with them. Though the fourth grader, even if the child is in fourth grade, I would request to start with book one because this forms as a base. Even if your child is in fourth and fifth grade, I would suggest not to pick up just four and five, but to start with book three. Because you have a lot many tools, you know, you cover the pyramid stories, you cover the story part, the story chart, the pie chart, you cover the pourquoi, you cover the circle story. So all the uh, show and tell, all these helps them to understand and express the genre better in later years. So this is the first and the primer book, which you should uh, do it if you are planning to inculcate creative writing. Yeah, anyone else? What would you suggest in this case? First and second, as I'm telling you, work on the grammar structures, the spellings, uh, give them the word bank, uh, let them do the picture description, the picture talk in, in the sentence form rather than paragraph. So go for those things. Explain them what are settings, just make a base. What is plot? Yeah, the, the most five most important of your narrative writing is the characters. Who all are the characters? Just randomly. Okay, what other things you can do for the using the transitional words? Yeah, first, next, then finally. You can just pick up a rhyme like uh, uh, Jack and Jill. Give them the sentences. Jack and Jill went up the hill to fetch a pail of water. Jack fell down. Broke his crown, Jill came trembling after. Just give them the sentences, ask them to arrange it using first, next, then, finally. So all these small, small exercises is going to help them prepare in writing the uh, sequential uh, genre or whatever we are doing it, covering. We are at least target to cover 10 genre before they move to grade six. The book five is going to cover it up. Yeah. So, any more questions? Uh, getting participation certificate for this session. Uh, I'll get back to you on this. Ma'am, please share the recording so we can go through it again. I just received the hard copy today. Amazing. Okay. Meet and greet. Wonderful. Wonderful. Excellent. Any more questions? Let me check the chat session, if any. I would definitely like to attend for next year. So if you have filled up the Google form with your email address, of course, we would be targeting the same teachers so that you are in a flow, you stay in connection with the book, you have the base already uh, filtered. And uh, this is all excited to share this work. And I hope it reaches most of the children and it eases out the time and the efforts of the busy teachers. Kindly share the Google form. Okay, I'll just share uh, my number here. Just WhatsApp me and I'll share the Google form with you. So we have you recorded. So we will get the certificate. About the certificate, I, I, I guess we have not uh, promised about it and still I'll get back on this. 
Okay, any other questions, teachers? You can email us. Word.musti at the rate yahoo.com or you can email Sar if any questions related to book, ordering your book, we are available. Yeah, thank you so much for attending. It was a pleasure for me sharing my work. Yeah, okay. Yeah, Diksha, any more questions to be dealt with? No, ma'am, I think so. That's it. Okay. Yeah. So, Can we have a picture, a quick picture together, if possible? Sure. <laughs> Just a minute. Thank you so much. So thank you so much, ma'am, for such a wonderful and informative, informative sessions. So uh, we believe that Nasema has addressed effectively all the questions and it was a great session. Also, I want to thank each and every one of you for participating in this session and being so engaged. So we assure you that we will be returning with yet another session. So for now, thank you so much and have a great day. Thank you so much, ma'am. Thank you, Diksha. Thank you.